Hi, my name is Raymond Camden, and uh, I am a Cold Fusion Jedi Master. And uh, I'm here to talk to you about uh, one of the new features in Cold Fusion 9, the Virtual File System. Now, just by the name itself, you can kind of get what I'm talking about here. It's a virtual RAM-based file system. Now, what would we use this for? Well, we commonly have to work with temporary files. Uh, we may be resizing an image. We may be working with PDFs. Uh, we may be working with uploads, for example. And what we normally do is find some out of you know out of the the way folder, dump our stuff in there. Uh, we then typically build some kind of uh, cleanup script to go through it later. You know, and we essentially go through a lot of work to just temporarily store files. Well, the virtual file system gives us a way to kind of bypass all that. Uh, we can store everything we need to in RAM, not have to worry about hitting the hard drive to load stuff. And what's even cooler is that uh, we can use it to bypass sometimes where we have needed to use real files when we didn't really want to. For example, take the CF feed tag. The CF feed tag allows you to parse uh, remote URLs uh, to work with RSS feeds essentially. CF feed works with either a real file, the XML, or a URL. One of the things that's missing from CF feed is the ability to pass a username and password when you make a network request. CFHTTP has that. Great. So why not use CFHTTP to do the authenticated call, get my data, bring it back, and then work with it? Well, again, CF feed can't work with a simple text string. It has to work, again, with either the URL or a source file. Well, instead of creating a temporary file someplace, I could instead use the virtual file system and save it there. Uh, let's take, take a look at a few examples of, of what we can do with the, VF, with, with the VFS. Well, in many ways, it's going to work just like everything else does. Uh, what I have on page here is a very simple string. I take that string and then I use the file write function to save it. Notice the path, ram colon slash slash slash. This is our root directory for the virtual file system. It will not match any real file system out there, so Cold Fusion knows that we're not talking about your server's physical hard drive. Instead, it's speaking just to the virtual file system. Outside of that, though, it just plain works. If I run this file, we'll see. All done. Now, obviously, kind of a simple example. I'm not actually doing something with it. Let's look at actually reading from the virtual file system. I have a few things going on here. First, I'm doing a CF directory. Again, it just plain works like a normal CF directory call. I dump the results. I'm also doing a file exist, uh, looking at that file that I just made. If it does exist, I read it in and I'll put it to screen. Again, so this should look exactly like any other file-based operation that you may have done before. And no big surprise there. We can see the contents of my virtual file system, including the file I just made, and the file read operation worked just fine. So what else can we do with this? You know, certainly we can do file reads and file writes, well, every single file function is going to work on it, again, just like normal, normal uh, file operations. In this example, I've actually, uh, am, am doing a file copy and then a file delete call. Now, certainly, I could have done a file move as well, but I wanted to show multiple examples of file operations on the VFS. And we could see here that that file that I had just made, it was copied and the old one was erased. So one of the features that people have asked for for a long time is the ability to store cold fusion code in the database and then take that code and actually render it on screen. Now that certainly has some security concerns that you want to keep in mind. But what's nice is that the VFS now actually allows for this. If you do trust your clients to put some code within the DB, we can now support this. What I've done is built a super simple CMS that allows my client to edit the header and footer of their web page. Let's take a look at that first, and then we'll look at how we use the, the VFS to render the code in there. This is a very simple uh, interface that's grabbing uh, 
content items from my back end. If I look at my header, you can see it says good morning. Right now that's just plain text. My footer though actually has some CF code in there. And again, this is all being stored in MySQL actually. It's not a real CFM file. Now, how are we gonna use this? I built a simple CFC that will take care of grabbing that particular content from uh, MySQL. So based on the name of the content, header or footer, I can get the text that they put in. Once I have that string, I can actually save it to the VFS. I've done that with line five, where I do my file write. I'm saving within a folder that I created called dynamic files into a file called header.cfm. And again, this is not a real file, it's all virtual. But once I have that, and if I create a mapping to it, I can then CF include it. Notice that I've done that on top for the header. I didn't have some normal vanilla simple page content. And then I've done it again for the footer. Now remember that footer was dynamic and actually had CF code in it. I'm gonna run this page. And we can see actually that that copyright actually executed because ColdFusion took that text from MySQL, saved it to a fake file, and then CF included it just like a normal CFM file. If I wanna get fancy, I can go into my header and I'm gonna paste some text in here. where now it'll be a, a, a bit more of a dynamic header and it will say the day of the week. So I'm gonna save this code. And again, in MySQL it's just plain text, but that is CFML code. And when I go back and reload my page, we'll see it's now dynamic. So again, pretty darn powerful stuff and just one more of the uh, new and exciting features in ColdFusion 9. For more information, check out the ColdFusion Developer Center. Thank you very much.